I like making videos, videos of my dogs right from start. So I just feel like let me even push this thing to people outside, let them see what I have. So that's how I started my brand influencer journey on TikTok. My name is Shomi Ayobami. I just graduated from Olabisi Onobanjo University, Agoiwoi, yes. And the name of my kennel is Bamis Kennel, but you all know me as Dogne. So I focus on Siberian Husky, I focus on Chow Chow, and I focus on German Shepherds. So what made me start dog influence is basically, is basically, let me use this street slang that we use breakfast, because I had an issue with my ex and we parted with. I'm always lonely, like I said, when I started my TikTok account, I was just an undergraduate then and we were on strike. So I don't want to be idle. So I like making videos, videos of my dogs right from start. So I just feel like, let me even push this thing to people outside, let them see what I have. So that's how I started my brand influence journey on TikTok. This is how I actually influence for brands. When I know the brands and uh, the brand I'm actually influencing for is not really far from me, I will just go down there myself to check out what they do, to verify their identity, to check out genuine, how genuine they are with their business. Because I don't want, I don't want something that will push what is not right or what I don't use for myself. I would like to push it to my audience. For example, there was a time that a brand, a brand reached out to me concerning some sort of chemicals that they use in treating ticks and all. I'm not a fan of using chemicals on my dogs at all. I saw the DM on my DM on my TikTok page and I ignored it. I did not reply to the person. The person texted me on WhatsApp. I still did not reply. I don't want something. I don't I don't know how to put it to the person that I don't use this. I don't believe in it. It's, kind of, it's harmful to dogs. I don't want them to feel somebody about their business. So I just ignored the person. So concerning the exploitation of dogs, I have not really done that. I have not exported any dogs before in my life. But when it comes to importing, right from the okay, let me just tell you the the process I follow right from where the dog lands at the airport. Once they land at the airport and they come out of their crate, I, the first thing I do is just to give them water, just to get some strength. I mix the water with glucose, obviously. So after doing that, then I put them, I put them inside inside the vehicle. I turn on the AC because obviously they are coming from somewhere that has snow. Unlike Nigeria, that the weather is always hot, very very hot. I don't mind the smell that will choke me inside that vehicle. All I'm after is just to get that dog safe home. Then once we get home, I'll bait for the dog. And then still, I won't expose that dog to sun or anything like that. I won't put the dog where my other dogs are in the kennel. I will put the dog inside my room or inside my sitting room, turn on the AC for the dog just to be chilling for a while. I will let the dog come outside in the evening and in the morning when the sun is not out here, gradually, gradually, the dog is actually going to adapt to our environment. That does not mean I will still, I will, after the dog has adapted to the environment, I will be living outside all day. No, during the afternoon, I will have to bring her inside again because you don't have to expose your dogs to direct sunlight before they can suffer from its stroke. And this is dry season. You have to take a lot of, you have to take a lot of measures, a lot. Even my huskies that have adapted to our weather very, very well. I still come outside once in a while, take ice box out of my freezer and just dump it inside their cage for them or I put it inside their water just for them to lick. And I eventually, in Sebaich, my husky will actually lie down on the ice block just to cool himself down. All these, I don't post it on TikTok for you, but these are the things I do behind the scenes. Concerning dog breeding and brand influencing, actually, the way I've actually done it so far, I don't influence from something that does not have to do with dogs at all. I don't do, I don't influence for something that does not correlate with dogs. I'm into dogs. I post dogs for a living. Obviously, you can't expect me to influence for a Kanyaman parcel. No, <laughs> two, different, two different things entirely. Do you understand? So that's just it. And a lot of work goes on behind the scenes. You see, you people see wonderful videos on TikTok. But I channel a lot of work behind the scenes just to make sure the dogs are clean. Me, myself, I'm not a dirty person, so I won't like my dogs smelling all around. So I beat them whenever they need to beat, then I clean up. Even their kennel, I can actually eat inside my kennel because you won't perceive it, the slightest odor over there. Once I've cleaned in the morning, everything is done. And then I don't even have to use Isal, just wash everywhere. Once one comes out, everything, every odor is eliminated.
Okay, so another thing I would like to let you all know is that be careful of what you consume on social media. Be careful of what you consume on the veterinary page comment section or any dog page comment section. Even my own dog page comment section. Be careful of what you consume. Many people make a lot of comments that are even worth to the original thing. Don't always seek a veterinary always seek a veterinary advice and please deal with someone you can trust to avoid stories that touch the, that touches the heart right from your vet doctor to your pet vendor always follow someone you know that you can trust any sign of red flag bro just run away to my people out there my name remains show my obama as you all know me as dog Man. keep on watching africa dog blog follow them on tiktok follow them on instagram and follow them on youtube i got you people man <laughs>